In this video, we'll show you how to install a high-performance Rockford Fosgate audio system on a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. Hey, welcome back. I'm Eric, and today we're going to install an HD 9813 SGU Stage 2 on this cool 2008 Electroglide Ultra Classic. We'll get started by using the thumb screw to remove the seat and then use a 10 millimeter socket to disconnect the battery negative. Now we're ready to remove the fairing. First, we'll install the service cover on the fender. We also need to protect our front marker lights, so we'll turn them slightly to the side in order to give us some clearance. Then we'll use some velvet covers or tape some microfiber claws around them. We'll use a T27 Torx driver to remove four bolts on the inside, two of which are located between the forks. Then we'll use a T25 Torx to remove the three bolts that hold the visor in place. Now, it's best to have two people for this step, one to hold the fairing in position and the other to remove the screws. Once we pull down on the fairing, we'll disconnect the headlight harness and then remove the fairing from the bike. Now we're ready to remove our speakers. We'll start by detaching the speaker wires from each one. Note that the white wire with the red stripe is the positive and the other wire is negative. We use a 3 16 Allen driver to remove one bolt from the fairing support bracket. Then we'll switch to a T25 Torx to remove three screws from the speaker and carefully remove it. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now that that's done, we're ready to remove the factory radio. First, detach the OEM harnesses from the radio by lifting up on the tabs, then pulling the harness out. Then, remove the antenna. Detach any accessories that are mounted to the top of the radio as well. Then, using a long reach 3 16 Allen or L wrench, remove the top two screws holding the main support bracket and two screws from each side of the radio. Take note that the access hole allows you to reach the front screw. Once you're done, carefully remove the radio by sliding it out from the back. Now we're ready to remove our tour pack speakers. To get started, use a T9 Torx driver to remove four screws holding the grill and speaker in place. Remove the grill and speaker, then detach the speaker wires. Note which wires are positive and negative. And once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to install our new source unit. To get started, use a clean, slightly damp microfiber cloth to remove any dust around the fairings opening. Then insert the radio at an angle into the rear bracket housing. Be careful with the front of the radio not to hit the gauges or catch anything around the rubberized dust shield. Slide the radio into the fairing opening, then slide the chassis down into place. Use a 3 16 Allen to secure the radio using the existing four bolts on the sides, then secure the top two bolts into the radio bracket. Once we're done, reconnect the OEM harnesses and antenna. Take note that we're not using the RCA output harness supplied with the radio since we're going to use the high level output. But on this motorcycle, we're going to use the aux input, so we'll go ahead and use a T10 Torx to open the access door and plug the harness in with the catch prong facing up until it clicks into place. We want to talk about the USB input on the radio, which allows you to charge your phone, play music, and make software updates. Now, you have several options for this cable. The first one is leave the cable as is, but that will require you to remove the fairing to make any software updates. Second option is to zip tie the USB extension to the harness in between the forks. Now, that's not very convenient either. The third is replace the cigarette lighter with our USB and zip tie it to the handlebar since the grommet fits perfectly. 
Now, we're gonna actually show you a fourth option which replaces the cigarette lighter with our universal USB and 3.5 millimeter panel mount accessory. This optional adapter provides a convenient flush mount USB port to charge your mobile device, play your music through the USB drive, allow you to make software updates, and coolest of all, connect your non-Bluetooth audio devices into the radio's auxiliary input. This will give you direct access to all your music. Now we're ready to install our new speakers. The TMS5 SG speakers included in your kit contain replacement bezels, grills, and screws. Now be sure to use this hardware as it accommodates the slightly different mounting depth and trim ring. Position the speaker with the logo facing down and the thick bezel facing up. Insert the two longer screws into the top of the speaker and secure them in place using a number two Phillips. Then using a 3 16 Allen driver, Secure the fairing support bracket back in place. Using the shorter screw, attach the bracket and finish securing the speaker. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now that we have that done, we're ready to remove our gas tank. We'll start off by disconnecting two harnesses and pulling two breather lines in the back. Note that they may be zip tied underneath. Next, we'll disconnect the main gas line. Push up on the hose and while sliding the fitting upward, pull down on the gas line. Now be sure to have a shop rag handy to catch any excess fuel left in the line. Now on our motorcycle, there's also some aftermarket LEDs that we'll be disconnecting. Once that's done, use a half inch socket to remove the two bolts from the front of the gas tank and two bolts in the back. Now that we have access to the center channel, we're ready to install our power and tour pack harnesses. To get started, first unsnap the center channel cover. Then take the connector side of our power harness and run it up the clutch side to the amplifier location that will be mounted on top of the source unit. Then we'll finish routing the power and ground cables down the left side of the channel, making sure we have enough slack to make our battery connections. Then we'll switch over to our tour pack harness and run the connectors labeled rear in and rear out up the brake side to the amplifier location. We'll finish by routing the harness on the right side of the channel and resting any remaining slack near the battery. Now we're ready to install the speakers in our tour pack. To get started, we'll run our tour pack harness along the factory harnesses and route the wires labeled clutch left to the left speaker and brake right to the right speaker. Follow the factory harnesses and insert the wires into the bottom cutout. Next, attach the spade terminals to the existing speaker wires, noting the black stripe being negative. Don't worry, they're keyed to fit only one way. Then we'll attach the speaker wires to the speaker itself, noting red is positive and black is negative. Next, place the speaker and grill assembly in the tour pack while aligning the logo toward the bottom. Finally, using a 2mm Allen wrench and the four supplied screws, secure the speaker in place. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side.
Now we're ready to prep our amplifier for installation. We'll use the small L bracket, heat sink, and two flush mount screws from our amp mounting kit. First, position the heat sink upside down with the heat sink fins facing you and the L bracket with the Diamond R logo facing down. We'll use a two millimeter Allen to secure two of the flush mount screws into the holes labeled 98 to 13 Street Glide. Before proceeding, be sure to remove the pre-installed power connector from our amp, since our harness already has one. We'll flip the assembly over and secure our amplifier in place with four button head screws using a two and a half millimeter Allen. Once we're done, we'll tune the amp. Now, we offer this free amp tuning guide that's available in the description of this video and through this kit's product details page at rockfordfallsgate.com. Once we get the amp configured, we'll use a T10 Torx to remove two screws from the back of the source unit and secure the assembly to the top. Now we're ready to wire our amplifier. We'll take the input harness from our amp mounting kit and connect the cable labeled left side input to the left OEM terminals and the harness labeled right side input to the right OEM terminals. Once you're done, connect the Molex to the amplifier's front input. Now we'll switch over to the output harness, noting that the red is positive and black is negative. Connect the cable labeled left side output to the left speaker and the cable labeled right side output to the right speaker. Finally, plug the Molex into the amplifier's front output. Now we're ready to connect our TWRP hack. First, connect the harness labeled rear input to the amplifier's rear input and connect the harness labeled rear output to the amplifier's rear output. We're also going to install this Y adapter because the customer wants to add bag lid speakers at a later time. Once you're done with that, plug the power connector into the amplifier. Keeping in mind, the blue turn on wire is not used in this configuration since we're using the high level input signal to turn the amp on and off. Now we're ready to reassemble our motorcycle. We'll start in the front and clean up our wiring in preparation for the fairing. Then we'll move to the back and connect the power cable to the positive terminal and reconnect our negative cable with our amp ground. Once that's done, we'll put everything back in place. Now that we have the bike reassembled, we're ready to test and tune the system. Now we offer this free tuning guide that's available in the description of this video and through this kit's product details page at rockfordfallsgate.com. The guide illustrates what tuning preset to use based on the speaker configuration of your motorcycle. Now the names of the presets may vary based on the software version of your source unit. You can always download the latest software at rockfordfallsgate.com. So go ahead and use this guide to select the proper preset. Once selected, the radio will take a few moments to load the desired tuning profile. As you can see, that install is pretty straightforward. If you prefer to have a professional do the install for you, we have a network of authorized Rockford Fosgate dealers that can be found on our website. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our technical support. It's free and they can be reached Monday through Friday at 1-800-669-9899 or through live chat at the bottom of our website at rockfordfosgate.com. Until next time, I'm Eric. We'll see you again soon.